Hi, and welcome to the TaylorMade podcast. My name's Sarah, and I'm coming to you from my bus conversion, which sits on two and a half acres of Gubby Gubby country, which is southeast Queensland, Australia. So I just want to acknowledge the traditional custodians of this land and pay my respects to their elders past, present and emerging. Um, I really wanted to start this podcast, YouTube channel, um, I'm not really sure what to call it, <laughs> um, after sort of being inspired by quite a few of the knitting podcasts which I've seen recently and a couple of homesteading um, channels. So um, I'm going to link some of my favourites uh, below, but I just wanted to say a huge thank you to um, Shay Elliott from the Elliott Homestead. I absolutely love your channel so much and your Instagram is beautiful. And um, Lerga from the Fibre Tales podcast, which is the first knitting podcast I found. And from there, I found Denise at Earth Tones Girl, which I just love. And most recently, um, Knit Hive, which is, uh, I think Lizzie is her name. And she has just started her podcast. I think there's only three episodes. So it was really awesome to see someone um, from the beginning, <clears throat> rather than having to play catch up for the last few years. Um, I was also really inspired by a uh, Facebook memory that popped up from five years ago, actually almost to the day um, when I decided to get my bus. And uh, I was really struck by not only how completely different my life is now, but how much um, is possible in five years. And it, I really reflected on how I hadn't documented a lot of that. And so I, I kind of, it's not an urgency, but certainly uh, a feeling of really wanting to document my journey and my process. Oh. <laughs> You may hear my dogs running around. We're on, uh, yeah, we're on the bus. They really like it. So this podcast is going to be a bit of a journey, um, an adventure of homesteading. So I live uh, off grid here with my husband and our two dogs. Um, I'm almost finished building my bus conversion, and we are almost finished renovating the shed that we live in. And we're just about to receive a vintage caravan, which I'm going to renovate and run as an Airbnb, a sort of off-grid uh, experience, um, with a bigger, longer-term view of running some retreats here on our property and growing our food through permaculture. Um, I'm a huge crafter and maker, I'm sort of a maker at heart, I would say. So building, crafting, knitting, sewing, any anything that falls under those things, I will be talking about here. Um, the crafting especially will be uh, quite important and um, self-sufficiency is kind of one of my values. So I make a lot of things and we build a lot of things together. And so I really want to document that process and, and just kind of invite you along for the adventure. So um, in that vein, I will start uh, with some finished objects. So I'm fairly new to knitting. I learned when I was seven or eight, my grandmother and my mum taught me. Uh, both are excellent knitters. My gran in particular was um, an exquisite lace uh, creator. She made lots of shawls and um, my mum is now knitting from her stash. She passed away a few years ago, so I think that's just gorgeous. Um, but I hadn't knitted anything from probably the age of seven or eight when I knitted a scarf, I think. Um, and then in my 20s, I might have knitted some baby booties for a friend who had a baby. Um, and then I didn't knit at all until this year. And I'm 41 now. So <laughs> it was quite fun to pick up the needles and learn. Um, so my first, it's almost finished. I'm going to call it a finished project because I'm finished knitting it. Um, now, let me just go to my notes here so that I remember everything correctly. Um, this was the Shallows pattern by Blue Peninsula, and it is a scarf slash cowl. You can knit it either way. Um, and I kind of made a few mistakes, and it ended up being a bit longer than, than I had planned, and so I'm not quite sure whether I'm going to leave it as a scarf or have it as a cowl. Um, but it is absolutely beautiful. The pattern is just gorgeous. 
don't know if you can see that. Yeah. There we go. There we go, that's better. So I think I might do it as a cowl. I think it will still be really nice. So I need to just join the ends there. Um, and I don't know if you can. There we go. The um, yarn is from uh, Natural Fiber Arts, who is a local indie dyer close to me where I live. And I'll show you the yarn as it came to me. Sorry if the light is quite bad. I'm not used to... No, that's not working. <laughs> is that working? There we go. Um, I'll get used to working. I'm videoing on my phone, so I'm not quite sure. I will get better. <laughs> oh no, it's not, not focusing. Um, okay, so that is Natural Fibre Arts, and um, it is a merino silk yak, so 60% merino, 20% silk, and 20% yak. Um, it's in the colour denim, and I got 100 grams. Yes, 100 grams, and there's about 35 grams left over, so I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do with that, but it's absolutely beautiful. It is so soft. Um... I probably wouldn't have done a lace or <laughs> or used, uh, you know, 2.5, I think it was, needles for this. So um, I probably wouldn't recommend doing something so intricate and tiny for your first knit. But <laughs> um, there was many, many a heartbreak and ugly, snotty cries while I, film, uh, while I filmed, <laughs> while I knitted this. And um, I think I ripped it back and restarted it about 15 times and if it hadn't been for my local knitting group which I joined a couple of months ago I, I genuinely would have just given up and so I'm so grateful that I didn't um, because I really after this I really sort of got into um, yeah an easier pattern and just uh, a more relaxing time knitting. Okay so that's that. Uh, my second um, finished project is actually this project bag. Um, which I just love. I absolutely love it. This has just recently been with me down to Melbourne and back and has just been fantastic to, um, to travel with. It was super easy. There's lots of pockets inside. Um, I don't know if I can that's my, one of my whips, I'll show you that in a second. Um, let me just grab my notes because I have this all written down as well. So the project bag is by Can Do Patterns on Etsy. And I will go ahead and link all of this stuff below in the box. Um, it's just a, I think it's her simple drawstring bag or something like that. It's one of her most popular um, knit, uh, knits. One of her most popular patterns. Um, I love sewing. This was really, really easy to make and I really enjoyed it. Um, the only thing that I think I would change with the size, this is the large size, uh, which is amazing, but it's got one of these awesome handles that when they're smaller, you will kind of hold and you can knit with. But with bigger projects, that's just a little bit too heavy to do that and kind of cumbersome. So I probably would put two handles and make this more of a tote bag next time. So, um, but yeah, that's the only modification I would make to it. It's absolutely fantastic and really sturdy. And um, yeah, I made it out of, uh, this was a curtain that I found in a thrift shop and um, just some plain cotton drill, which I also found in a thrift store at some point. So I, I try to use natural fibres where possible and I also try and thrift most of my fabric and crafting supplies um, as a rule. <laughs> and then with yarn I really love supporting indie dyers and cottage industry and you know um, women in small business. So my next finished project is actually uh, a hand cream that I'm developing. I've been making my own skincare for almost 15 years now and um, I had not had a hand cream before. I'm actually testing this as a face cream as well and I've been putting this all over my body actually because it's winter here in Australia so um, 
and sort of when I arrived in my 40s, my skin just got a little bit drier and needed some more moisturizer. So this is um, an organic, um, is that gonna work? Yep. This is an organic moisturizer. Um, so I've been testing this. I found that when I was knitting and I my skin was actually, didn't seem dry until I started knitting and then I was it was catching on things and my cuticles and my nails. So this has really, really helped, but I've absolutely loved it as a, as a face cream as well. Um, it's got organic shea butter, jojoba oil, sorry, all organic, shea, jojoba, rosehip, macadamia and avocado oils and the macadamia and avocado oils are made made <laughs> produced from local farmers which i get direct so it's like incredibly let's see so you just need the tiniest tiniest amount um i've literally been slathering my skin with this it's so gorgeous um and it just sort of melts in really, really quickly. So um, I did start, I've sort of sold my my products on and off, mainly to friends and family. And I've done markets here and there over the years, but I never really took it seriously. And then last year, uh, my husband was really like, you should, you know, do this in markets, you should really produce a line of products. And I we started and I got some branding done. And, um, and then COVID lockdowns happened. And um, my father-in-law got really sick, so we were back and forward to Melbourne. So things just didn't pan out. Um, but I am thinking about starting a little shop online and selling and doing markets as well, but selling my, um, skincare and some, maybe some project bags and some other bits and pieces that I make. So that is something that I'm considering at the moment. Um, so that is it for my finished projects. Works in progress. I feel like my entire life <laughs> is a working project. Um, I will always have lots of things on the go or lots of ideas sort of plotting. So I will go through the tangible ones that I've actually started. And this is almost finished, actually. Um, but this is, let me see if I can do it the right way around. This is a winter white knits autumn woods shawl again from etsy I don't know if I can. and this is actually a gift for my husband's daughter for her birthday um so i've got probably about five inches of this to go um the yarn is 100 percent merino it's a super wash and it's from miss click Clack, who i found on etsy but i've been following on instagram recently um, I absolutely love her colours and how she dyes things. I actually made this up. I started making this up in different yarn, which I'll show you, which is also incredibly beautiful from Natural Fibre Arts. Um, but they were solid colours and it just looked too dramatic a change when the, the colour changes happened. So um, let me just show you this. Oh, how do I do this? There we go. So you can see the light and the dark colours. It's um, she calls it fracta, um, but it's just sort of semi-tonal, semi semi solid, and literally stitch by stitch, um, it knits up. I don't know if I can do a close up of this. Let's see if I can. So you can see how it's light and dark. And same with the pink. It's just absolutely beautiful. Um, and so that one is, this is her Livingston Merino, um, which is, I think, about somewhere between a five and a seven ply. So it's not quite double knit, but it's, it's close, very, very close. Um, and this is her Drop Bear Brown. It's actually more of a charcoal um, grey, but when you... There we go. Oh, that's better. There we go. You just need my face in there as well. <laughs> um, when you when the light does hit it, you can sort of see a warmer tone in there, which is fantastic. Um, this is called Silver Bear. Ooh, there we go. Which is the lighter grey. And then 
This is the Claire color. And again, you can really see the semi-solid colors there. I don't know how they do it. It's absolutely beautiful. I'm not a huge fan of pink, but this is one of the most gorgeous colors. So, um, so that will be a finished project, a finished item very, very soon. Um, what other works in progress? Okay, so I've kind of been obsessing a little bit recently about winter coats. <laughs> um, we moved from Melbourne up to Queensland about 18 months ago, and we've gone from a temperate climate into a subtropical, which has made such a huge difference. Uh, I We have such a small, um, tiny and very mild winter here. We need a fire at night, probably for about two months of the year, and then that's it. Um, and the days are very warm. So we are probably anywhere between low to mid twenties is the normal to have. Um, and then it goes down to single dig digits overnight for a couple of months, but it's really, really, really not very cold at all, <laughs> uh, which is a huge shift from Melbourne weather um, and Scotland where I'm from originally. So, uh, my skin color has changed. Um, I have much more of a tan, much more of the year. I never go back to being as pale as I did through winter in Melbourne. And so colors look very different on me. I'm still playing around with what colors suit me, um, because the ones that used to don't anymore. Um, uh, but we still do quite a lot of trips down to Melbourne. So we, I still need a wardrobe that's going to be, um, actually winter. So I've been obsessing a little bit about winter coats. And uh, the first one that I want to make is this one here. This is a 1960s Vogue pattern. 1983 is the number. Um, and of course, I have fallen in love with a pattern that is not in my size. <laughs> so this is a size 10. And I'm closer to I think the 14 or 16 in this. So I have started, you'll see from my pattern pieces there, I've started uh, copying out the pattern pieces and I'm going to do a um, draft them up a couple of sizes. So that's a bit of a process. I haven't, I've done a full bust adjustment before, but I haven't done a full pattern grading. So um, yeah, that took me, that sort of messed with my head a little bit. Uh, and so I put it down for a little while and um, I will go back to it, but that is on the cards, certainly for next winter. So I have, you know, some time to do it. Um, in the meantime, I also kind of fell in love with this one, which is a McCall's B6385. And I really loved the, the color on this one. So um, what does it call it? It doesn't say what kind of color. I don't know what you call it, the stand up color anyway. So that's, um, that's another one that I thought I would make. I've never done any tailoring before, so I was really interested to, um, yeah, to, to have a go at, at doing that properly. Um, then we've got, <laughs> so not in the fabric or making worlds, but um, we obviously have the bus conversion to, to continue with. We, the next couple of jobs are we've got three more windows to replace and then um, we will do wiring, plumbing and a couple of kitchen units to build out. This is the actually the oven, <laughs> which will go on the other side and the fridge and that will all be built in. Um, and then we're also getting a car vintage caravan. So that's arriving at the end of next month. And I'm going to be renovating that for uh, to run as an Airbnb here on our property. So I will probably do some more videos on each of those and take you on a bit of a tour around the bus and on the property as well. Um, so let me just pop those there. Um, now what else do I have here? Um, yes. Okay, we'll do, oh, sorry about the light. Ah, every time I move. Um, let's talk about my acquisitions. Almost all of my fabric stash is um, from op shops. I really, really enjoy the process. I love reclaiming. I love things not going to landfill. I really love not having 
um, huge access. Like I like that it can be um, smaller quantities and uh, limited amounts. I find that quite enjoyable as part of the creative process. Um, so when I went to Melbourne, <laughs> I went before they had lockdown. I went straight to one of their my favorite op shops called Savers, and um, I won't show you all of my stash, but this is the most recent stuff that I bought. Um, I really love buying belts because they are great as little handles. Uh, they are much cheaper and very sturdy, and you also get a whole bunch of hardware to make other projects from and this was only three dollars so I got a couple of these I got this one and I got this one again with the hardware on top uh, I haven't actually measured any of these yet because I literally only got back the other day but I got this how cute is this fabric absolutely love it I think there's about four three or four meters here of this and it is Buzaku. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. Here, let me, there we go. It's 100% cotton. It's really heavyweight. So um, that's gonna make some gorgeous project bags and some other, other things. Um, this I bought for the color. I actually thought I would, it's a dress that's been handmade. It's just a straight up and down dress. There's no dots, there's nothing, there's just some seams. It's all in two pieces, including the sleeves. Um, but then I wasn't actually sure if this was the right green for me. And it's been really hard to tell because my hair has been all sorts of crazy colours recently. I've had fuchsia pink and uh, I was blonde for a few weeks. And now then I went this kind of, kind of rose gold colour because I put red on top of the blonde and didn't leave it in long enough. And now it's this sort of burnt orange colour. So I'm usually brown. Um... But I'm, I'm really struggling to know my colours at the moment. I, I think I'd like to get my colour theory done because I just, yeah, I'm a little bit confused about what kind of colours suit me. And I'm also, I don't know if it's just getting into my 40s or I don't know if that happens where you just shift what, you, what you're attracted to. But some of the really bright, um, vibrant colours that I used to wear in my 20s and 30s just don't seem to suit me. Um, and I'm not really attracted to them that much anymore. So uh, I don't know if I will redo this into a dress or skirt that actually works. Um, I think I will wait until I have brown hair again and see what that looks like. Otherwise, it will just be some kind of, I don't know, bag, <laughs> probably, or accessory. Um, it feels like cotton. It's a kind of fairly thick cotton, so that's really nice. Um, this, and that was actually quite expensive. I think, actually, let me have a look. How much was the cotton? I think this was about $4, the polka dots. Um, this was more expensive because it was in a clothing dress store, uh, dress area, not store. Um, and it was $8. So um, I kind of have a bit of a rule that I don't spend more than $15 per item unless it's sort of a sewing machine or something. Like, I don't spend more than $15 on a fabric, basically. This, I thought was so cute. Uh, it feels like cotton fleece. And it has, I don't know if I'll be able to, let's see if I can show you this way. There we go. It has these tiny little houses and cherries and acorns. And I just thought, and little toadstools there. I just thought it was so cute. And um, how much was this? This was six dollars and there's about six meters of this so I thought this would make a great dressing gown for next winter um, so that's what I'm going to do with that and then I have a really nice heavy navy linen I don't think that's going to come up on on the screen which was four dollars so I think there's about a meter and a half of this so I'll probably make a skirt or something from that and then I found this upholstery fabric which is so lovely and soft um, and that was that was three dollars and then I found this block out fabric with the blue and cream stripe which I just thought would be fantastic for um, project bags what I especially because it's um, like water resistant I suppose um, 
what I found was that this went on the floor and, and a lighter color wasn't that great, but I had sort of um, stabilized it. So uh, I think it would be really, really good to have a kind of a, a plasticky lining so that it doesn't get too dirty or if it does, it can be easily washed. And then the other two pieces of fabric that were not from an op shop. So I do buy uh, new fabric and I do always try to go to um, sort of online shops or smaller stores. This was not. These two fabrics were from Tasutis, which is a, a main uh, fabric place in Australia. But they were having a massive sale and, um, and I'd done quite a lot of research in what I wanted. And so um, these are for the two coats that I, the two coat patterns I showed you. So this one is um, a really beautiful red. It's not coming up on camera very well. It's a darker, that's a bit better. <laughs> uh, it's Italian wool. Uh, wool cashmere, so it's 80% wool, 20% cashmere, and it was $89 per meter, and it was reduced by 30%, so I got two and a half meters of this. Um, it was pretty much the last on the roll. I absolutely love the color, so I just have to decide which coat I'm doing in which color, so that's the red, and then I got the same wool in black. This was only 10% off though, the black, because they had so much more of it. Um, but again, it's 80% wool, 20% cashmere. Um, and it just, it, oh, it just feels so good. So I got two and a half meters of that as well. I think I actually only need two meters, but not to worry. Okay. Oh, now I will also show you my yarn stash. <laughs> um, so when I arrived back from Melbourne, I had to go into 14 day quarantine. I'm in day three um, today. And um, I arrived and Miss Click Clack, who I bought the yarn from for the shawl, had sent me a gift. <gasps> Roar! It's so beautiful. Um, so this is her Milkman's Horse Worsted Superwash Merino. Um, it's 100 grams, which is 187 meters and it's in the color Eden which is just oh it's so much better if I put it closer to my face it is absolutely gorgeous it is the same color as my glasses which I just love <laughs> um, and again it's got that really beautiful light and dark tones within it um, I just can't wait I don't know what I'm going to make from this but I'm very very excited and the other one she sent me was a one of a kind. Oh, I feel so lucky. Let's see if that, there you go. It's a one of a kind. It's called Mary Creek, which is a creek in Melbourne. Um, it's sock yarn. It's 80% merino, 20% nylon. And uh, yes, Mary Creek is the color, I believe. Or maybe it's just, no, 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 sorry. Mary Creek is the sock yarn that's what she calls her sock yarn and the one of a kind color I have no idea but it's this incredible blue um, and again I just love how you can get the light and dark in the same strand I just love that effect so yeah it's not I can't quite get the color right on camera um, but it feels beautiful so um, I think what I'm going to do as it gets warmer is start doing some sock knitting because I have ordered some needles. It's really hard <laughs> to find anything here in Australia, um, especially when you live rurally. Most of the things I have to buy are online, which is great because it means I can support you know, smaller um, businesses. Uh, but the needles are coming from Canada, so uh, they are tracked and they're on their way but I think they're going to be another couple of weeks. So that will give me some time to figure out. I might do toes and uh, rib. Is that what you call it? Toes, heels and the rib band in this and find a contrasting color to do the main sock. So anyway, um, and the other yarn that I am dealing with at the moment is reclaimed from this 100% wool Aran cardigan 
that um, was very daggy <laughs> and very big. Um, it had these like embroidered little flowers and which were an absolute nightmare to undo. Um, <laughs> but the wool is just so gorgeous. And so I started um, reclaiming it. And um, so I've done two sleeves so far, which is great. Um, and so I'm just going to undo the rest and I will knit up probably my first cardigan or jumper because it's so beautiful. It was just massive and really, really unwearable. So I want to make something that actually fits me and I'll get some wear out of. So that is that. Is that everything? Now, let me have a think. <sighs> I thought I was going to talk for a lot longer, but it's what 30 minutes. That's good. That's really good. Um, so yes, I think that's everything for now. Um, yeah, <laughs> I didn't expect to be done in 30 minutes. No, I'm really glad though. Mm. So I hope I haven't spoken too quickly and, uh, I would love, love, love for you to leave some comments and, um, if you feel like subscribing, that would be awesome. I would so appreciate it. Um, I'm going to get a lot better at this <laughs> as I go. <laughs> Next is like learning to edit. I've probably said um a million times and uh, I will certainly get better at like figuring out my camera phone and um, yeah. Um. <laughs> so uh, I hope you've enjoyed this. I, I've really, really enjoyed sitting down and, and just talking about some of the things uh, I think it can get a bit overwhelming when you have lots of things on the go or lots of ideas and dreams and they're all sort of moving in different times and spaces and, you know, you sort of have to pick things up and then put them down and they all require different types of resources. So, uh, but I'm really glad I've taken this opportunity to sit down and, and chat to you. Um, it feels kind of weird talking straight to a camera and not actual people. So if you're there, <laughs> I would love to hear from you. Um, I'm going to link everything in the box below all of the people I've mentioned and their respective Etsy's and places you can find them um this has been a hoot this has been a lot of fun I'm really really excited I can't wait to show you around my bus and um and take you for a walk on the property as well um I am day three of 14 days of quarantine so uh my husband went down to Melbourne and for work and we're supposed to be there for five days and then he got extended and during that extension for another week they went into lockdown so he was stuck there uh and then when the lockdown was lifted he had to do 14 days hotel quarantine or stay there and so he decided to stay there so five days essentially turned into five and a half weeks and two lockdowns <laughs> so <laughs> i decided when queensland um lifted home uh, ha uh, hotel quarantine and said you could home quarantine I jumped on a flight and went down to see him um, we have never spent that much time apart at all and uh, and so that was kind of tough so I went down and was supposed to be down there for a couple of weeks and they went into another lockdown so I had to jump on a plane really suddenly and come back so that I could make sure I could ho uh, home quarantine because we have two dogs and they were in the kennels while we were away um so yes, and we've just found out this morning that uh, it's now back to hotel quarantine. So um, yeah, we're hoping in a couple of weeks when he is ready to come home that that will be reduced to home quarantine or hopefully nothing at all. But um, yeah, so it's been a strange couple of weeks. Um, and But it's given me a lot of time to think about starting this and actually started and thinking about what I want to create in terms of a little online shop um, and I've sort of really just been delving into the tangible things like I, I did a um, quite a lot of business coaching online for almost five years on and off and I just really felt that my life was being lived online and I wasn't really enjoying the tangible aspects of creativity and um, you know, it's, they'd sort of been on the back burner. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, so so picking up the knitting needles and pulling out my sewing machine and having it on my table constantly and, um, you know, really sort of designating some space for those things has been absolutely fantastic. And I'm really excited about what is going to come from that. Um, I still do a little bit of work online and obviously this will be online and my shop eventually will be online, but I needed to feel some grounding into, um, you know, our home and um, yeah, some of the things that we're working towards. So I'm really excited uh, and I'm really, really pleased that you're going to follow me along and, and join the adventure. Um, if you have any questions, please pop them in the comments below and I will make sure I come back and try and answer them. Um, if you have any ideas of videos that you'd like to see, um, yeah, let me know. So thank you so, so much for being here. Uh, I'm really just so appreciative and um, I'll see you in the next video. Bye.